the world's flying machine here with us, Charlie Rhodes, who will ask all your questions with regard to his training program. He is here um, direct from India after a successful stint there. And he has worked with all our team, uh, teams, development, underlying team, and the national team. I open the floor for questions and we limit our questions uh, only for this training and nothing else. And before we open uh, for questions, I think John will like to say a few words on his uh, stint here. Thank you. I I'm just scared if I start talking, I want to cover all your questions before you even get to ask them. So uh, I'll be very brief. I when I was first approached about working in Sri Lanka, and sorry, firstly, thank you for changing the time, because it was supposed to be 5.30, so thank you very much for, for coming earlier. And when I was first approached to, by Sri Lankan cricket to come and work with the teams, and it's, it is four sides I've been working with, the A team as well, and it's, I was very surprised that there was a concern about the fielding in Sri Lanka, because I've always had great respect for the way that the Sri Lankan team has fielded. And I think what sets them apart, they're not very far away from India as the crow flies or as the airline flies, but what sets them apart here is that in India a lot of the time it's forward and backwards and that's it. There's only one sport that most of the boys play and that is cricket. They bat, it's all straight, backwards and forwards. Here there's talk about rugby, there's football, so I watch the guys, the games that the, 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 the players play, they really are first and foremost athletes. So my whole thing about working with a fielding team is that if they can get to the ball, I can teach them to catch it. If the guys can't get there, it's not my job. It's the fitness coach or somebody else has got that headache. I'm more concerned about the techniques with regards to stopping, throwing, and catching. Because believe it or not, you've all seen it. Cricket certainly has three disciplines these days. It's no longer just batting and bowling. Fielding is the third discipline. And it's not just for T20 and 50 overs. Test cricket is as just important these days because we know that they're all saying catches win matches or a run out. And I think what Sri Lanka, as I said, I was very surprised firstly to be given the call and ask if I had time after the IPL, which again they were very accommodating because my time could have stopped on the 17th. Uh, first five matches we lost five out of five. And fortunately Mali started bowling very well. And then we went right through to the final. So my time just kept getting pushed out and pushed out. And, and happily, I still had 10 days to come and work with the guys. So I've two days left to go. And I think what I've seen has reinforced the, the, the impression that I've always had about Sri Lankan fielding, is that there are a bunch of players who certainly are athletes. And with a little bit of tweaking and technique from a catching point of view and the throwing point of view, uh, there's no reason why they, they can't be one of the best fielding teams in the world. Test cricket, 50 over, T20. Okay. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, Lois is open for questions. Yeah, uh, just raise your hand and ask questions. Well, uh, it's quite difficult to know what makes a, a great fielder. I think these days, someone who can field in any position. Sure, you have specialists in, in T20 cricket, in, in test matches you'll have someone who likes to stand and slip or you have a short leg specialist. But people who can accommodate and, and field in a lot of positions. So you've got a few guys here in the test side, some shorter players who are not going to go field on the boundary. I think what makes a good fielder is someone who expects the ball to come to them every ball. Because that's, that's all I did. I'm not saying I was, there were not many fielders in, in my day throwing themselves around because it, it wasn't expected. I think now everybody's expecting the fielding. As I said, it's the third discipline. So what makes a good fielder is someone who's expecting the ball to come to them. Because from there you can move. Too often there's taller guys, especially the fast bowlers, when they're bowled and over, and you can see it. Their mind is somewhere else. So I'm looking for body technique. For me, everyone talks about good hands or soft hands. I see their feet. If their feet aren't in the right position, they'll never get there. So no, how, no matter how good their hands are or their hand-eye coordination, if they're not moving their feet, which means they're not ready for the ball to come, that's what I'm checking. So I like to see body positioning, um, because the feet movement will get you to a good position to catch the ball or to throw the ball. So what makes a good fielder? I think someone who's expecting the ball to come to them and is actually enjoying being in the field. Not someone who's waiting for 50 overs to go and bat, or his time between the overs to go and bowl again. 
So someone who's enjoying it and wanting the ball to come to them is a very different player to someone who doesn't want to be there. But there's certainly techniques that we can teach. Um, I think my, my downfall as a cricket player, as a fielder, was my throwing technique. I try to do everything far too quickly. You'll see with my conversation, I start, I get faster and faster as my sentences go on. And Bob Wilmer was the first coach who got me to slow down. But by then also technology had come into the game. So with a third umpire referral, the batsman's bat can be on the line. So prior to that, the third umpire, you had to run the batsman out by at least a meter before the umpire gave you the benefit of the doubt as the field, always to the batsman. So Bob Wilmer was the first coach who taught me to slow down, which was very difficult for me. So I'm still talking to guys about speed to the ball is important. So I'm not saying slow down, be slow, but strong in the throw. So speed to the ball is, is essential. So what makes a good fielder, he must have athletic ability. And again, the Sri Lankan guys in the test squad that I've been working with, here, even in the, in the A side as well, there's nobody that they're hiding, that can't field, can't be there. So I think that's, that's, that's the key. If, if, as I said, as the, if the person can get you the ball, I can teach him to catch it. But I can't teach him to get there. That's the hardest part. Absolutely. Physical fitness is, 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 is imperative to being a good fielder because in a test game, in the 75th over of the day, it's been a long, hard day. So if you're not fit from a concentration point of view, the same as batting. It's all about minimizing the mistakes and doing the simple things well. So that, that's my whole... I haven't, I haven't come here with sort of hidden secrets that nobody else knows about. It's just doing the basics very well. And in the 75th over of the day, it's sometimes quite hard to do the basics, especially if you're not fit. So seeing these guys train, I mean, uh, I have been, I've been really amazed in that the guys are here, they're still, well, we're still, still in the nets now. And, and I got here at, at, at 8.30, and they were catching balls in the slips, and from there we went out to the field. So he's, he's been here doing all the extra training. So the facilities that are available for the Sri Lankan players, I think it's been really, really impressive. So, yeah. It requires hard work. There are no shortcuts, and there's a team out there that certainly does work hard. Yes, sir. I agree. Uh, now, how to maintain the consistency in the field? Now, uh, uh, to take an example of our team, uh, we have up and down with the same uh, coaching staff. Yeah. So, uh, how to maintain the consistency? I think, that, I think the most difficult thing for a coach is that once the players step over the line, over the boundary. There's nothing that you really can do. So the work is done, like today, in the build-up to the tournaments, or in the build-up to the series. And it is so difficult, because we as coaches, you can't tell if the player is getting 100%. You can kind of work it out that some of them are off on the day, but no matter how much we talk as, as coaching staff, it's not going to make a difference on the field, unless the player wants to do it. So from a consistency point of view, the problem is if the team is on top, often they pick everybody up. If a team is going down and the heads drop, then the players don't want to, or not expecting the ball to come to them. So that's something as a coach is really difficult to, to, to do. I mean, you can be a great motivator. We had Ricky Ponting with the Mumbai Indians and, and someone who's, who's worked and won World Cups all over the place and worked with some great players. You know, he, he couldn't get consistency out of us. So unless it's coming from the players, it's very, very difficult. It's, no matter who the coaching staff is, the players need to deliver that. And you can ask them as much as you, as, as you want, in the nicest way or the hardest way. Some players sometimes need a kick in the backside. Sometimes they do. You know, but each player is different. You can't treat all 13 players in the squad exactly the same. Man management is key, but once they step over the boundary rope, it's up to them to deliver. You really, your work is done. So for me as a, as a fielding coach, I know that once a game has starts, there's not a lot of advice or changes I can make once the game has started. So I'm making sure that every time I go to practice, it's like a match situation. Because if the players practice like it's a match intensity, then I can hopefully provide some consistent performance, because they know it's the same there as out in the field. If they practice here half-hearted, giving 100% only when the game has started, then you never know what they're going to give you. So I'm looking for match practice or match intensity practice all the time. The current best player and fielder in the world. Oh, I'm South African. Maybe De Villiers, of course. Very fine. <laughs> you know, I, I think I, I've worked with a few teams, not many national sides, because that's that's a full 
10 months of the year you, you're on the road. And, uh, you know, just at the IPL, having watched what he does in the field, with the bat, with, in the field as well. But players like Suresh Raina, I love watching him bat. Because not a ball goes past without him. And I think that was the key for me, was that I want to die for the ball. And that's what I've tried to speak to the guys about today. Because you never know if the ball will stick or if you will save it. But if you stand still, you'll never reach it. If you don't go for the catch, 100% of the times you'll never get it. But if you go for it, maybe you can. And I think that Suresh Raina has that attitude. So I enjoy watching Suresh Raina in the field and during the IPLs. And I don't have a television at home, so I don't watch much cricket other than the IPL. So World Cups, I was having to do a commentary here. They asked me about players and I didn't know who they were. So, yeah, not so good. But I, I, I watch at the IPL and I think Avery de Villiers, uh, McCullum, good fielder, Gapto at the World Cup. So there are some guys out there who are good all round fielders. Johnny, you said that you were a bit surprised when you got the call from us. Mm. So from your point of view, they have learned any uh, lack of eating from the side or what was it? Sorry, sorry, the question was, was there a problem? Have I seen a problem with the yeah. fielding? Okay, so, uh, and again, if I come here, I'm training it like a match intensity. So I don't see, I haven't seen the, much of that lack of consistency. I think that was the, the key word, was the lack of consistency in the fielding. Sometimes it was good and sometimes it was bad. And I think what I've seen so far has been a consistent standard. Because it's, as I said, it's short and sharp and it's high intensity. It's, it's like a match situation. So that's all, all I try to impart is, and, and, and if the guys are not diving for the, I try and show the players what they are capable of doing. Because some of them are brilliant. I mean, there's a lot of guys, and in most teams you'll have those, people who are slightly better than, than the, the other players in the team. But if you can show everybody their full potential, so if you can drive them to perform that, it almost shows them what they can do, if they're prepared, as I said. If you don't go, you'll never know. So that's what I've tried to impart. And I haven't seen any lack or deficiency. I think the one area that we don't, as a cricket, as a, as a team, we, don't, we talk about fielding, we talk about catching, or stopping the ball. Throwing is so important. And I think the, the biggest problem in the subcontinent is that everybody else, there's a couple of fast bowlers, everybody else bowls spin. Whether it's left arm spin, right arm spin. And from a throwing point of view, it's the worst thing you can be to throw the ball. Because your body weight is turning, you're pivoting, um, you know, you, you, your follow through as a fast bowler is like a throw. So your body weight goes, that's all I'm trying to get, a strong, accurate throw to the target, all your body weight must go to the target. Not always possible, as I say, cricket's a sideways game, not just back, especially fielding. So get as much of your body going towards the target. But the spinners start with a disadvantage, because they'll bowl a thousand balls in the net. And every time they pick the ball up, their body's thinking, okay, I'm going to pivot. So they throw going away, and they're trying to get the ball there. So there's certain things that I know in the, in the 10 days that I'm here, I'm not going to change, see, I'm not going to see a change. But sometimes I see the guy start, ah, and he remembers, and he follows through, like I've asked him to follow through, but it's half a throw. But at least I know, okay, he's thinking about it. So those sort of things have to happen at a practice session that goes from here. So yeah, there are certain things that, in the subcontinent, you'll see a lot of, any batsman, he's never going to be a part-time fast bowler, he's going to be a part-time spinner. So they all stand in a throw like that, and that's why. In fact, one bounce throws, they, they actually turn on the, on the outfield instead of being you know, a strong wrist position. So those are sort of things that we try and get as a fielding staff, because we all talk about catching and ground fielding, but throwing these days, it's, it's become an important part of the game, especially from an injury prevention. So I don't come here, one of my concerns was there's a test series, I spoke to Marvin at the point before I got out here. Is somebody's phone. No. Um, and just said, I don't want to come here and destroy anybody's shoulders because when you do change slightly the technique, suddenly muscles that haven't been used before are now put into operation. So you don't want to overload that. So with a test series coming up or a series against Pakistan, full series, I said, I don't want to leave here with six guys you now can't throw. So we've been very careful to monitor that. So a lot of the fielding that I do is hopefully for injury prevention because I now throw with a, a strong technique which uses the entire body and not just the arm. Because if you are a fast bowler, you get away with just using your strong shoulders or strong arms. If you use everything, little guys like me can still have a strong throw. And that's the key. I try and show them what they could be, you know, sort of levels that they can achieve, hopefully. And the baseball throw is interesting because, you know, we've, baseball guys, they don't have the other way around, where, where we'll spend two hours in the nets and ten minutes in the field, 
they'll spend two hours in the field and maybe 10 minutes in the nets. So for them, throwing is something that they do with their eyes closed. Here we can bat and bowl with our eyes closed. Fielding is something that requires a bit of remembrance or, or working on. So the throw that I've, I encourage is that you know, in a baseball position, uh, people talk about Sean Pollock, Glenn McGrath as fast bowlers. They weren't fast bowlers, they had just good wrist position, which is why, again, most of the seamers have a strong throw. It's the shoulder, sure, but it's also the wrist position. So the spinners, spinners start here and they undercut the ball. So baseball coach Mark Young, who worked with Australia, the first time I started coaching as a fielding coach, I had never been coached before. So here you have batting coach, a bowling coach, a fielding consultant, a fielding coach, a physiotherapist, a trainer. You know, so you've got six, five or six guys as the management squad. We had one coach, one physio, and one, that was it manager who looked after the travel bags, made sure you got to the next destination. So if you had to do any work, you got your players, your fellow player, Hansi Cronier, Gary Kirsten, come hit me catches. That's all we did. Hit me catches. No pug nets, no equipment. So I didn't learn to throw a cricket ball at all, just from what I did as a youngster. So no correct technique. So the first time I spoke to a baseball coach was Mike Young. So when I first started working for the South African team for one and a half seasons. And he spoke about the correct technique. But that's when you're standing still. Okay, because when you're moving, that correct technique goes out the window. But as I said to the players, if you can get 80% of the correct technique, it's better than no te technique at all. So I know it's not the ideal, it's not a standing, it's not a textbook. It's like having a great team on paper, but the ball turns, it's whatever, we make mistakes. But as much as possible, my, my throw that I've now trying to teach is certainly coming from a baseball position. And the problem is from a spin point of view, a lot of those guys are having to to start again almost. And that's, that's not going to, as I said, it's not going to happen tomorrow or next week. But hopefully by the end of the year if they do enough, it'll be closer to a, a perfect throw in most situations. So yeah, I do, I do look towards baseball as opposed to cricket. It's throwing is something you never, as a kid, you never get taught to do. Just, everyone just throws it back, however they get it back. Dr. how much has the breathing techniques changed over the since you Yes. I think the, the major fielding technique that's changed is defending the boundary line. Because in 50 over cricket during the 90s, early 2000s, so before T20, the boundary wasn't really something that, you know, you kind of put third man, you put your fast bowlers there to hide them almost. The action was always in, then the power play overs came in. Suddenly, bats also changed. Now players are hitting more sixes even with the man back, they go over his head. And T20 cricket, they go anyway. So defending the boundary is an area of the game that I never feel it on the boundary because all the action was a backward point, or in the covers or mid-wicket for the off-spinner. So that's an area of the game that has changed. And, and, and again, working with the players, if you can't take the catch, save the six, save four runs. You know, I speak to every guy in a T20 game, just save me one. Because most games these days, whether it's 50 overs or 20, it often comes down to the last over. So everybody saves one run, that's all I'm asking for. So whether you've dived and saved the boundary and they've run three, one run is saved, that's your job is done. So I'd say technique-wise, throwing has got to be strong because there's lots of gaps now, different fielding positions, with the fielding restrictions, um, with the, the power play overs. It's very difficult for, for bowlers to defend the short. You know, they have many square leg out, mid wicket out, long on out, big gaps are there. So I think the throwing has been one area that has changed, more focus on. And the second thing is saving the, saving the boundary or defending the boundary is an area that, that was never in the game before, before T20. So you've seen some spectacular catches. Some guy pulling it back, coming back in to catch it, or throwing to somebody else. So that, that was never in the, in, the, in the game in my day at all. But there's techniques to doing it. So it's, and it's, it's practicing it too. Not just expecting to do it in the game, by luck or by chance. The guys can practice it, which we've been doing. Then, probably building a event player or a play or one day, stay a special. Well, I mean, there's been a few players who've been able to play in South Africa. Jacques Callis played 20, 50 and, and Test cricket and, and did it very successfully. But I think you certainly have specialists who, who will only play certain formats of the game. But as much as possible, you're, almost, you're looking for a unit. Because players who know each other well, so whether they're playing in the test, the T20 or the 50, the more time they spend together knowing each other's game, I think the stronger that unit's going to be. And, and you'll see it in the fielding. 
because I've always just maintained that fielding doesn't go to my score. If I'm a fielder and I've scored 10, 10 runs as a batsman, but I save 20 in the field, the scorecard still says John Giro's got 10. And I don't know, the selectors are thinking about the next game and who to leave out. My name's up at the top. So it's a good indication because the bowler's benefited. I've saved runs from him for his bowling, and the team has benefited. So as much as possible, I think you do have specialists. You'll certainly have three or four guys who, who will just play test cricket and won't play 20. But as much as possible, you want to build a unit here. So if it's a squad of 15 or 16 players that you're choosing your two or three teams from, I think it goes a long way to building a closer unit, and that is evidence in the field. A close unit certainly feels, I think, a lot better than, than guys who don't. Yeah, sure. I think, you know, looking at the under-19, you've got guys who've probably only been playing cricket for five years, four years at this level. So cricket is a habit. Whether you're batting or bowling or fielding, you actually haven't got time to think. And that was probably my biggest problem as a batsman. I was trying to think too much. Sweep, reverse sweep, is he going to hook, I'm going to hook this one, or instead of watching the ball, hitting the ball. So cricket's quite a simple game. And under 19 level that we worked with, the guys have adapted very quickly. Because they haven't got 10 years of, this is the way we do things. So because without thinking, you don't have time when it's coming at 140 k's an hour, okay, is my back lift there? You, you do it at practice and it happens. So what I've seen the difference is, is that, sure, the intensity has been great with the national side, but one or two small adjustments has been difficult to make. They'll do it the first time, but five minutes later when they come back, or three minutes later, the next round, they w they'll go straight back to what they've been doing for the last 10 or 15 years. So that is the difference, is that the younger players will make the switch a lot quicker and take on what you're showing them just because they haven't got 10 years or 12 years of habits. But that's exactly what cricket is, just a reinforcement of the same thing over and over and over again, so you can do it without thinking. Do you think age is the barrier for any No. <laughs> I've been so excited. I mean, I haven't thrown a cricket ball for ages, so demonstrating, I've pulled two hamstrings, but I've still been able to hit the stumps. So, no, age is, I think that, yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, Herschel Gibbs was the same thing. He still thinks he should be playing cricket, but no one was selected because Herschel is he's getting old now. But it, it, it's not a barrier. I mean, if you're 36, if you can get around the field without, uh, I'm trying to think, um, Misbah or like for Pakistan. They don't have a great fielding team, but he was one of the better fielders in their outfit. Okay, slow to get down now at age 40. But it, 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 what, is a, what, is an, a, what is an old man these days? I think if you're playing all forms of the game and IPL, you might age faster. But 33, I mean, I retired at 33, and I certainly didn't retire because I couldn't keep up anymore. So I think age is a barrier if you're a specialist fielder. But if you're able to, to do exactly what's... And, and the way these guys are looked after these days, the way they prepare, the way they train, and the way that they... The, the, the fitness is not about getting them fit. It's also about injury prevention. So the way the guys are training, there will come a time when they're not performing with the bat rather than in the field, I think. I think. So that's when you know it's time to call it a day. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordi, the, uh, uh, the game, the game of Sure. I'll tell you one thing, and as I said, I don't have a television at home, but because I was doing commentary during the World Cup, I didn't like the power play overs at the end, because it, it, was, it was too, too one-sided. I mean, the, the bowler really didn't have a chance. The fielders had no chance. I mean, they, they sometimes were just fetching the ball from the boundary. So I think from an ICC point of view, they're talking about the bat. Is the bat too big? Is it, is it too easy to hit the ball for six? Um, and I think it's just, if, if you give the, the bowler one more fielder option out the, out the circle, it, makes it, it gives them something to bowl to. So yes, I, I think that I didn't like those power play overs. Because it, it was, you want a contest between bat and ball. At the start, two new balls, there's no, there's no reverse swing now at the end. So it's very difficult for, for the bowlers to have any impact towards, and you saw that in the World Cup. The South African team scored 150 of their innings, runs, in the last 10 overs. You know, and it's, even though I was supporting South Africa in one stage against the West Indies, that was a bit embarrassing. I just thought, this is not cricket. 
Abe de Villiers sure is a special player, but it's too one-sided. So yeah, I, I think it's, that needs to be changed, not the bat. Players will still find a way, but if you've only got, four, you've got no option with regards to saving, what do the bowlers do? They can't bowl a Yorker, a bouncer, a slow ball. Every ball that bowl just goes. So yeah, I think it needs to be a small change here. Well, it, it, it's interesting because with the national side, obviously they, they, they're practicing towards test cricket. So I think the tallest and the shortest guys, the two, Mubarak, I mean he's, how do you pronounce this? I'll say Mubarak. Mubarak. I mean that guy is he's only six foot two, I think, but his arms make him about six foot seven. So for a tall guy, and that's always the key for me, as a short player, I could always move to the, I want to see players move. Because I said, if you can get the guy to move, you can get him to catch him. Too often taller players, they stand and they use their arms. So for him, I think for me watching him, he's, uh, he's had a shoulder injury. So it's more, again more about technique, making sure the technique is right. But watching him take catches, whether it's at slip catching in the morning at gully or, or backward point. I mean, I, I'm very competitive and I think I'm still competitive. And with the Mumbai Indians, they know. Because sometimes we have days where it's just tennis ball practice because it's a game that we play too many matches one after the other. And the players, I work in always five catches, five catches, five catches. And uh, if they've caught four out of four, they know the fifth one is a rocket because I don't want the player to catch five out of five. So I put a goal up and tell them, I'm going to go past you, I'm going to go past you. And he was catching balls that were past the goal. I mean, I have set up the same goal post every time. Whichever country I'm working with, five meters. And this guy was catching balls that were a meter past the goalpost. So Mubarak was, for me, he's a guy who, in, in, in test cricket, he's going to be very, very useful in the gully or backward point area because nothing, nothing got past that I've seen. And I try to go past him, I promise you. As I said, it, it irritates me if I can't win at least one contest. So yeah, I think he, I mean, there's, there's good athletes, but he stood out for me just because he took some incredible catches with his, not just his reach, but the way he moved for a tall guy. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank you. For being here. Thanks, yes, thank you. And again, thank you for changing the time. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool.